honey. <laughs> what are you doing there? Measuring the ketones. The ketone body. Dead bodies. You have a guess? How deep am I? 1.2? Point eight. <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> this is painful. No ketones. What yeah, have you done? This is painful. And zero point four is also painful. Zero point four means that I'm not in ketosis, but it's not you the end of the world. Some... How much do you want me to win today at poker? $10,000 US Okay, I'm gonna do it for you So guys, let me tell you a few things about how this last week went So last Saturday, the games were still good We waited a little bit on the waiting list and we got in the game So the game was very good And then Sunday something happened and all of a sudden uh, the action died. So I came like 6 p.m. and no one on the waiting list. There were of course four or five tables as, as usual, but the games were very very bad. And that kept, uh, kept on happening the whole week. And Monday, Tuesday to the off and then the whole week until today, that is uh, Saturday again. So Today I came at 5 30, that's 5 .45. and my position on the waiting list was 61. So with 61 people on the list on Saturday night, I think I have to wait 3-4 hours, my guess would be. So I'm not going to get into the game anytime soon. If I get by 9 p.m. I will be happy. And so I was thinking about postponing for tomorrow tonight's hands reviews, but I'm not going to do that because I don't want to fall into that trap of postponing. So even though it's 4 a.m. 3.49 to be exact uh, and I still have to finish the edit for yesterday's vlog which I'm gonna do right when I get back home uh, I need to go through a couple of hands and the theme of the night is don't be lazy change your seat at the table so I was having one of the worst positions at the table I had two weak players to my left and immediately as I saw an opportunity to change the seat I took it right away so I jumped in and immediately after that uh, a hand happened where I I won uh, all the money from from one of the weaker players that were in my left and now they were in my right because I changed seats. Of course, I got lucky as well. I could have lost this, this pot uh, and then I could have said that, see, don't change seats because you get unlucky. But over the long run, I'm gonna have an advantage in position over a weak player. So, that hand was an ace five suited that I isolated with and I got six calls including the limpers so uh, the flop comes ace for deuce uh, and the big blind big blind leads big blind leads uh, 700 and another player calls and I call as well the turn is a three giving us the straight bam 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 let the money flow <laughs> and now the big blind checks and the guy who called raises um raises no bets bets 1600 and i decide to raise here because the the leading player on the flop the big blind he only had 
uh, like 1500 left so if I just call then on the river we play a protected pot and I don't think there's a reason for my opponent to put any for my other opponent that still has money behind the one who bets now on the turn uh, 1600 so there's no reason for him to put extra money in the pot on the river on a basically protected pot so I decided to raise in order to maybe get value from two pairs or a set that he might call with uh, hoping that he will hit the full house. I think I made a mistake because I made it 4000 and I think a mean raise would have been in place although that gives him better odds but I'm it's okay overall so unfortunately he folds and the other guy has a jack and we win this one another interesting hand another interesting hand we have ace queen offsuit the button opens to 300 small blind calls 300 and we make it 1500 in the big blind with ace queen offsuit button quickly folds and the small blind makes it 3000 which is a very weird play but we decide to call of course it's just a mean race even though i haven't seen this player out of line but he looked like a weak one and he had the type of plays of a weak player limp calling and shit like that the flop comes jack eight deuce with eight deuce of hearts we have the ace of hearts and he decides to check now this is a fine bet here i guess because some sometimes i'm gonna have over cards and i want to bet if i have queens or I, over pairs, I, I wanted to say over pairs, sometimes I will have over pairs and I want to bet those and then I have to find a few bluffs and I think ace queen with the ace of hearts is a good candidate if uh, we think we can get him to fall better which in this case might be ace king if we get him to fall ace king um, yeah this time though I decide to check back and see the turn in position and I, I, I still have options on the turn to bluff the turn to raise the turn on a heart or stuff like that or bluff the turn and river if he checks again so get more information I think my play is fine but the turn is four of clubs and he checks again and I decide to check back again because I know the turn is queen of clubs correction the turn is queen of clubs I decide to check back again because I was thinking that he might have a king here I'm not afraid of giving him three cards even better if he catches an ace then I can get even more value uh, and I I didn't think that there's a very high chance of him having king queen and thus me losing two streets of value by checking so I think check is in order either to induce a bluff from him or maybe he catches something on the river or he pays me easily on the river with uh, some sort of a pair I don't know what he could have back raising here so it's weird it's weird it's hard for me to put him on a range when he plays like that so I check back and the river is a six of clubs now there's a flush possible with the card on the turn and on the river and he bets a half pot 3100 into 6300 and of course I call and he had ace king so I guess we we maximize the value in this hand by playing like this so it worked out this time other than that um, other than that what happened other than that other than that i had some you know stuff like that king jack off a bunch of limpers we check in the big blind 887 everybody checks we lead on a jack turn we get a call and the river is a nine so a 10 makes a straight we decide to check probably check folding and he checks back his queen and we win a similar hand a limp uh, limp no we isolate king queen off uh, we get two calls we miss the flop 1073 
everybody checks, we catch a king on the turn, we bet and everybody folds. I think there were a few other interesting hands, but to be honest I was too tired uh, to write them down. One thing about poker in Macau is that they don't allow you to use your phone at the table. So if I want to take notes on a hand, I always have to stand up from the table and go three meters away. So stand up, go on the other side of the table, depending on your position. Sometimes it's easier to get up because you're just at the end of the table and then you just make a step and they will allow you to stay there. But if you're in the the other corner of the table to say like that uh, then you have to cross over the table and go on the other side to be able to stay on your phone so I was too tired and I was not in the mood to take too many notes so anyway uh, maybe I bore you with this hand so maybe it's better like this if I don't share too many hands Oh, I noticed the lighting is better if I stay here rather than putting it on the tripod. Or maybe it's the fact that I film, I change the settings to 50 frames per second. Hmm, it could be. Uh, but I think it looks good now. What else I want to say? Yeah, I have to go home and finish editing the vlog from yesterday. That's it. Another day. Another vlog. Thanks for watching.